coming to Gary, it was difficult in the very beginning to understand the culture because not many people were talking. Mm-hmm. And I guess because I'm an outsider, not many people were like willing to share, you know, the happenings and the culture of Gary. Cool. Hey, this is JP. Um, Cross Colors. We're back. Uh, today, I have with me Aja Yasir. We're going to be having a conversation. One of the topics of the conversation that we're having is the importance of spaces. Right now, um, I'm getting ready for um, Souls of Black Folks, a uh, glimpse into time. That's why the shop looks the way that it does right now. Um, it's an ugly stage, but the ugly stage helps with the appreciation. We're going to get back to that point. I remember we had talked about yeah. that, and I made a point to not forget that. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so before we get into it, uh, that's what it is. This Saturday at 7 o'clock, Souls of Black Folks, A Glimpse in the Time, Laurent MC, and the homie Bink. It's going to be here, Square One Culture Gallery, 632 South Lake Street. Be here. Now we're going to jump into this conversation with Aja. So a lot of people do not know about a situation that you went through. I know that you've been talking about it, but a lot of people have not heard about the situation in the city of Gary, and you need to. And even if you heard about it, you need to hear about it again. And so that you can share the information that you're receiving from the source today. So... Let's talk about it, and then we'll talk about some things after. All right. Hey, I'm Aja Yasir, and I am a gardener and regenerative agriculture farmer. And that means, regenerative agriculture means that you care for the soil. So I am in the process of building soil, and because Gary is is a very rich, biodiverse area, however, the city is also built on, on sand. So because the city is built on sand, I use a lot of organic material in my gardening practices. But I guess we can go into detail about that when we talk about ugly spaces. <laughs> well, yeah, you know what? We're, yeah, yeah, we're in it. We're in it. We're talking oh, right about now, the ugly spaces. Yeah. Right now, it's the beginning of May, and this is a, it's an ugly space right now. The flowers aren't blooming yet. A few herbs are coming up, but it's beauty in that ugliness because right now, like this morning, I can go outside. I went outside and I just picked herbs to make breakfast for my family. Although the flowers aren't there and you're not seeing the full scope of the garden, you're seeing it come into transition. So we're in a a transition stage and I guess I'm in a transition stage myself. But anyway, as JP was saying, it's a huge, it's been a huge ordeal because the city of Gary is taking me to court. We're going to trial for my garden and my gardening practices. And so that trial begins June 24th and that's where we are right now. And it's been a bunch of chaos surrounding it. Too much chaos because I use gardening as a way to meditate and to work through grief to work through mental health issues that I experience. So it's been too much chaos surrounding it. So I'm, I'm, sometimes I come into spaces like this or I go into spaces similar to this so I can kind of get back into focus because it's it's definitely difficult for me to focus right now. Yeah, and so like you can feel like the exchange of energy, right? Um, Right. Like when the energy that's being put out or what was put into it initially, when it's not being um, met, when that space is not being met, like with that same kind of energy Mm -hmm. um, to make it uh, a space that's conducive to growth um, and actual healing and and helping, you know, uh, like you said, um, for some people, like they just need an outlet. Right, everybody. Uh, they need therapy, right? And everybody for the therapy for everybody is not the same. Like we can't approach it like it's the same. Um, and so that's why you have a space like here, you know. Uh, like I said, it's in this ugly state right now. There's no art on the wall. There are a whole bunch of holes, you know. And there's things that need to be filled in, and sanded, and painted. Um, but then when Saturday gets here, it's going to look amazing, you know. Um, but actually seeing 
like what goes into making it get to that point like there's work that has to be done and that work is done from there are a number of different moving parts right and so that's a, a really good thing that um people actually get to uh like have an appreciation or that they have conversations about like these ugly stages right um and so even like in that situation uh like how you were talking about um because it was a space for for you to like help in dealing with healing right um if we actually um talk about like the mistake or like the ugly parts in it we're able to move past and get to spaces where you know what people they start to come in and they start to share whether it's through a conversation or even from them just being there in that space and being around people who are dealing with the same things that they're dealing with there are tons of people who come in here um who are artists you know and they have some things going on like really heavy you know and for one reason or another um it could just be a painting and it's something with it, it resonates with them yeah. you know and and then they get to talk with the artist that made that piece and come to find out that that person is dealing with some of the very same things that they're dealing with you know and now they get to just be in the space with the artist but also in a space where where there are other people who do the exact same thing and a, a lot of them they feel the exact same way and they haven't got to a space where they're cool about talking about it but they've expressed it through their art and the same uh for gardening i mean we were talking about that you know like um there are some people that do things just like as far as um you know like with their mental health and you know and the awareness um that therapy you know and, and how we go about approaching that therapy um like in our communities um providing spaces like this and not just not exclusive spaces but ones that are inclusive you know um where people feel safe where they feel comfortable you know um because when you're gardening it puts you in a we talked about this yesterday mm -hmm. too it puts you in a different mindset like it's not a mindset of scarcity mm -hmm. in an environment, especially it's, it's therapeutic to do it in an environment where you're taught that everything is scarce, that money is scarce, the resources are scarce, which all lies, mm -hmm. all lies. But when you're gardening and you're seeing all these zucchinis, all these tomatoes, and you, ha you have enough to share, you, it puts you in a different mindset. No, no life is not scarce, it's abundant. Well, you were talking about spaces and ugliness. It's interesting that your gallery is open right now mm -hmm. while it's in transition. And people have asked me, okay, well, why is your garden in the front? First of all, the whole space is a garden, the front yard, side yard, and backyard. Mm -hmm. But we get more sun in the front. So that's one of the reasons that many of the, um, the vegetables and fruit are in the front. But the back, we have fruit trees and we're planting a vineyard and the side, we're doing berries. But the thing with that is that why are we always trying to hide ugly spaces in ourselves mm. and ugly spaces that are surrounding us? Why do we always try to hide that? Why do we always try to hide the struggles that we may be going through? Like people just don't want to see it, I guess. I don't know. People aren't necessarily honest about what they're going through or honest about the environment, the, 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 the status of the environment that they're in. I don't know where I was going with that, but it was just interesting that people generally try to hide their ugly spaces. Yeah, well, you know, and even like um, like the mistakes, like I shared a post of uh, my friend Taylor, you know, um, she was performing and it was so cool. Shout out Taylor. Um, it was so cool as she was performing and she like made a mistake, but she just went, instead of speeding past it, which I thought was so cool, instead of speeding past it, like it didn't happen, she just went back and corrected it and then kept on, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and to me, I think that's what like art looks like in real life. That's why I said in a post to me, that's what art looks like in real life is not just editing all the mistakes and acting like they didn't happen, yeah. you know, but actually copying to it that they did happen mm -hmm. and then making an adjustment. And it wasn't some long break like in the song you know it was just like went back corrected it and went on you know and um and the rest of that post like i said that it was you're still able to you're able to channel greatness you know like exactly like what she did like in that clip you know 
and it, it, it was like about a minute long clip but for me it was really interesting and really powerful because that's something that a lot of people leave out when they talk about success like they fail to talk about the mistakes that they made yeah. they fail to talk about like their failures you know and a lot of people act like that's not part of the process when that's an integral part of the pro uh, part of the process you know um and getting it right and sometimes there are things that you end up taking an L because of some extenuating circumstance there's some things that are outside the scope of our control right and we just have to take that and but we have to learn from it right you know so that we can make sure and also like just the, the acknowledgement it helps us to appreciate well you know what so this did happen and so now we've acknowledged it and now we can have the conversation where it's now all right let's make sure this doesn't happen again what are we doing to make sure that doesn't happen again mm -hmm. um and that's how actually how uh, people get like these uh, streaks of successes because they've learned from the mistakes that they made and it was because they acknowledged and fixed those mistakes. Um, I think that's where we have to get to um, as a people and a culture and a city um, is actually admitting the mistakes that were made, like acknowledging and admitting the mistakes that were made um, and then moving forward, you know, with the thought process and with the work ethic um, behind the words of, you know what, all right, this happened, how are we gonna make sure that this doesn't happen again? Right. And then put the effort into putting actual work into ensuring that doesn't happen again, like those mistakes aren't made again. Um, there's just uh, an election, you know, um, yesterday, and there are, everybody's an agent of change, I believe, and we just have to figure out what side of change we're gonna be on. Yeah. as far as being an agent um there are people that had these great platforms right um there's some with platforms very general whatever um i just think that as moving forward as a city like we have to look at situations where um citizens are not being taken care of citizens are not being helped i have a platform i'm gonna say something about it because that shouldn't be the case. And people should know about situations such as yours and others. I, I feel that people that are trying to start businesses in Gary, that are from Gary, should absolutely be given all the tools and they should absolutely have all the roadblocks removed so that they can start a business and put their kids on a pathway to generational wealth. And also, help build up the community because now you have businesses that are owned by people in the city the dollar stays in the city yeah. and it stays um, it stays circulating within the city within our communities instead of going out mm -hmm. instead of going out for me I, I think that's one of the uh i would say the uh as far as Gary being like in this ugly space or being in like this transition period, um, that as, go as far as going forward, like those are some things that have to be addressed. Those are some things that have to be talked about, you know, and then with that acknowledgement, all right, cool, what's our plan going forward? And then to actually hold those people accountable if they do not keep their word and if they do not do exactly what it was that they said to get elected by the citizens of the city of Gary. So that is to every single politician, whether it's councilman, whether it was mayor, we will hold you responsible. You should know for a fact that we will hold you responsible and we will be watching to see if you keep your word to the people of the city of Gary. Right, and the thing with that is that a lot of politicians don't realize that they work for the people. <laughs> and a lot of people Every are not realizing that the politicians work for them. You know, that these people are working for you and they are supposed to have your interests in mind. They're supposed to have it. So I wanted to really go back to hide in the ugly space mm -hmm. because I wanted to talk like the one of the reasons that I garden, well, I garden for many reasons. You know, I homeschool on my garden. We, I feed my family through our garden, but also it's good for me because it's, it's therapeutic. Mm -hmm. I, ha I, I have a therapist, but gardening is therapeutic when 
my, my natural state is go, 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 go. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm an investor. So that's my natural state is to go, 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 go. But when our daughter died, we our daughter died in 2016, I tried to go, 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 because that was my natural state. And it got to a point where I had a mental breakdown. <laughs> I was like, I was no longer myself. Mm. And I had to do something with my hands because she was no longer, she wasn't there for me to hold. She wasn't there for me to nurture. So I had to do something with my hands. And that's when gardening, and it was ugly. I'm still in the ugly state, but I'm coming out of that ugly state and it's ugly. And sometimes I would just go into the garden and cry because that's all I could do. And I think that people need those sacred spaces. And we need to stop hiding the struggles that we go through because just because we're in a society of go, 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 go. You don't have to be a part of that. You, sure. Sometimes you have to step back and say, okay, let me, let me kind of think about this. Let me work through this. Let me heal through this. And I think that the city is in the process of healing too. And I think the people within this city need to step back and say, okay, while the city is healing, we need to heal too. Because as we heal, then we'll be able to hold people accountable. Absolutely, I, I, I agree with you. Um, actually, that was the point I was going to get next to, uh, that I was getting to next. Um, the my gripe isn't with politicians, um, solely with politicians, right? And it's like, yes, there are people who are in positions um, to effect change but also the people of the city of Gary ha have to have that same mentality, right? I actually have to be working towards change. Like, so what are we doing um, like as a people, like individually and as groups, as communities, right? Like what are we doing as far as like helping the city to move forward? Like we can't, it would be unrighteous uh, in my opinion to look at um, the mayor, Mayor elect, you know, councilman, councilman Lake, whoever it is, you know, um, in, in, in those different positions, it would be unrighteous of me to look at them as they're solely responsible for how the city of Gary is. That's unrighteous. Um, and that's not fair. Because it's, it's a group effort. It's a group effort, you know? So, yes, there are people who are going to be held responsible, but that's all of us. Mm -hmm. That's all of us. And when we just get rid of that construct of politician and, and citizen, you know? Uh, or a civilian, you know, we just have to look at it like we're citizens of the city of Gary, right? And I'm speaking from, and I don't even live in Gary, right? I don't even live in Gary, but I'm thoroughly invested in the city, right? I have friends and family here, and I have a business here, you know, and working to build more businesses here. Um, and like I said, I, I understand fully, and, and there are others who understand fully that concept. It's a, it's a team effort. It's not just one-sided. You know, we have to seek balance. We can't just look at, all right, it's these people, it's, it's their turn to do, and we're just gonna sit back and we're gonna watch. Right. It's like, yeah, we can observe, but we can also work right. while we observe. We can do both. Um, especially like if, if we actually really believe it. And, and that's young and old. That's young and old, that's for everybody across the board. You know, whether, regardless of what you subscribe to, it's like, hey, you know what? If you're here in this city, you should want this city to be the best that it can be. And that's what I feel. And, and that you have to put whatever work in to, to ensure that that happens, especially the way that you see it, that happening, right? It says that there are a number of different moving parts that will get this place to where it needs to be on Saturday, where you'll see paintings up on the wall and, and the place is filled with this amazing vibe, like it always is at square one if you haven't, felt it, you need to come down here at 632 South Lake Street and feel it for yourself in person. But it's gonna look great. Uh, and like I said, right now in the city, there, there are so many moving parts, you know? It's like, but we have to be, all of us have to be putting forth that effort to get this city to a place where, where people that live here are actually proud of it. Right, right, right. right. Um, and because that says so much uh, for people, and there are, and I don't want people to think that like, yo, the people that are here are not proud of it. That's not what I'm saying. Um, but there are quite a few people that are from here, that live here, that they just don't have the pride that's associated with, I want to be an agent of change for good. 
right? It, it just like the actions and the perception is, it might just be words, but what are you doing? Like when it comes down to it. So if that politician was to ask, hey, well, what are you doing? You would actually have something to say in reply. And there are so many ways like in which we can do, uh, which we can um, like effect change for the good, right? Um, through gardening, through creating these different spaces. Um, I say it often, I, I, like I really do, I say it often. I wish that somebody else would open up another space like this, another gallery, and help artists that are out here in the city of Gary and the surrounding areas to get exposure and to get paid because they're fucking dope. Right, dope as hell. like it's some dope pieces in here, and and and, and that's what I say. I'm like, look, there need to be more spaces like this. It isn't competition. There should be more businesses that are started by the citizens of the city of Gary. Like in Gary, this, it absolutely should be. It's not competition. And don't think that I wouldn't help you out because I would, absolutely would. Like I'm pretty sure, like you have yes. no problem. We well, we did the um. Uh, what was the event that we the did floral, in here? The DIY floral. floral. The but floral if, if people arrangement. want investment, you know, I'm, I invest too. If people want help investing or if people want help with growing. I mean, you have people here who are willing to help. It's not what you said. It's not the competition. We're mm -hmm. not. I, I mean, every entrepreneur is competitive in some kind of way. For sure. Many times we compete against ourselves. But it's not like, oh, I'm having all of this and you can't have it. No, we're here together. And Gary is so dope. One of the things I really love about Gary is that it is a roll up your sleeves, do it yourself, get out there and make it happen kind of city. And that's why we came in and we bought the house, we invested in the house and we said, okay, because we were in a transition as a family too, because we said, okay, we want to be able to live more sustainably. So let's buy this house, let's convert it over so it can be more sustainable, solar panels with food production, all of this, you know, because it is a place of roll up your sleeves and make it happen which is just a dope vibe of Gary. But there are a lot of people who are discouraged. Mm -hmm. We run into a lot of people who are just discouraged by that. And because they're discouraged, that sense of pride, that Gary pride is not necessarily there because they're discouraged by so many things that have happened in the city. And maybe they're discouraged by certain things that have happened to them individually i don't know but when you don't have a sense of pride mm -hmm. that's when you leave it open for other people to come in and take because they're saying they're like well this person doesn't have pride you know this person isn't taking care of it and you know or whatever they just come in and take without even thinking about the people who are there you know and that's how um I don't really want to get into that, but I think that that is one of the ways gentrification happens. Agreed. Because people say, well, I, this this is, okay, let me talk about where I'm from. I'm from Chicago. Okay. I'm from Inglewood. Mm -hmm. And I used to be a realtor in Illinois. And so I would talk to people in Inglewood. And they, and they had the same, many of them had the same kind of vibe that I run into sometimes here. Can you it's say like, that again? What? Make that, that, that statement again, what, what you just said about being in Inglewood and talking to residents in Inglewood mm -hmm. and then you felt that same kind of vibe can you repeat I that? felt that same I feel that same kind of vibe sometimes here mm -hmm. whereas people in Inglewood were are tired were tired they are tired it's like they're they're tired of the politicians they're tired of the crime they're just tired and people are saying okay well this is I got this a lot this is the ghetto I'm getting out of here I'm getting this out of here as soon as possible but I, as a realtor, I'm looking at you and I'm like, don't leave because the property values are going up. The property values are going up. And they're looking at me like I'm crazy. And I'm experiencing that same thing here too. People, I'm saying, I'm even though I buy property, mm -hmm. sometimes I tell people, keep your property, <laughs> you know, which is crazy. They're like, well, what are you doing? You're trying to buy property, but you're telling me to keep the property because I'm telling you the people are coming. And that lets you know. And I want to shake people like, oh, the people are coming. Keep your property, invest in your community. Like that lets you know that it's real. Honestly, uh, to me, like as I'm listening, like I, I hear that like when somebody is, is saying something that it can actually cost them like financially, mm -hmm. you know, like to say this, you know, like to let people know that like you could end up losing money. Yeah. 
right? But that's how you know that it's real. When someone acts like to, to essentially like the detriment of themselves to an extent to help spread information and knowledge, especially that would be beneficial, right? And I feel the same way. I agree with you on your point. This is one of the ways that gentrification happens, right? Um, because nobody sees the value. And so they space on it. And then some outside entity or a number of outside entities or people with money, with that resource of capital, they come in and buy it up and they buy it up. And now a place looks like some place that doesn't look like home. Mm -hmm. You know, to the people that were, that, you know, their families have been here for 70, 80 years, you know. Um, that's one of the ways that it happens, you know. And so we as the city citizens of Gary um, can actually um, be an agent of change for the good in that regard, right? By sharing the information that we have, not by keeping this to ourselves, you know, like tucking more information away and not letting people know. Uh, we had um, a real estate buying uh, seminar in here, Christina Lee and Gabrielle Luna, thank you so very much. That event was dope as hell. And there were people that came out, right? And they were able to get these comprehensive steps and then also able to paint like their dream home. So they're getting comprehensive steps and then visualizing that place that they can get with these steps and then they actually have somebody who's a realtor christina lee that was actually able to help them hey if you've got questions and that event was free and events like that they should be free i'm not just saying that because we do it here i'm saying that should be done for free information should be given away for free knowledge should be shared and should be spread for free especially when it's for the benefit of people right that's what i think good time we're going to charge you for a good time you're going to pay for a good time but information knowledge we give that away for free and we should right because it's going to help people it's going to help the city right everybody is able to play a part and the, inf the sharing of information the accessibility to information like you have it immediately like we have it immediately and uh that's why i'm a huge proponent of conversation because you get to um actually know like the layers uh that people that that make up people right um because there are some people there's some amazing people i talked with a guy in here yesterday uh he's the artist fourth degree uh black belt and like the conversation that we were having it it was so amazing so interesting because that's one of the last things i would have thought about this guy one of the last one of the last things i would have thought about this guy and to know that there are other artists uh who are in here uh like i was talking about own bookstore here in gary um just some of these things are just like incredibly amazing um that they're your young artists who are extremely i mean like extremely immensely talented but they just didn't have excuse me they just didn't have a space or nobody cared enough about these people to say hey well, we, well we've got a space you know come on we'll make, we'll make it easy you know what uh, you know what that absolutely should be in the show like yeah i want you to work in the show and that really makes a difference when there's an openness um, on the part of like not so not just artists, but there's a like a willing a, a openness, right, from people who are in these positions to affect change, and and there's an including of those people who would drive these different businesses and these different ventures forward and and these different initiatives forward. Um, so there needs to be an openness on both sides, right. Um, where, and that's the politicians and the civilians, right? You have an openness, right? Because the city is going to change one way or the other. Yeah. And everybody should hope that we're going to change for the good. That should be the hope of everybody, regardless of where you fall at, a politician or civilian. Um, and, and I think that's um, one of the, the best things uh, about conversation. Is we actually get to see, we actually get to talk and we get to see what your agenda is. You know, it sounded like transparency, like was what was trending in my estimation, you know, in like different campaigns, you know? So it's like, all right, cool. We'll see. You talked about transparency. Hey, you know what? Well, when the people call you on something, you know what? Hey man, transparency was your thing. Let's see it. Right. Because it's like the truth doesn't fear inquiry. Yeah. Right. 
Hey, we have nothing to hide. You can ask questions all you want to. How much time you got? You know what? You pick the place, we'll meet you there and we'll talk about it. That's simple when everybody wants to win. Hey, you want this to be better? Okay, cool. Money came here. Money was for this initiative. Okay, cool. Let's see it. Where did that go? All right, cool. That's where it went. Hey, man, you know what? That And what that does, that instills trust. Yeah. That's how trust is built, yeah. right? Trust is not bought. Trust is built. It's built. And people see, man, you kept your word. It's like, and you were transparent. You showed us, man, that's actually pretty cool. You know what? Yeah, and we actually see them like out in the community and, and they're actually showing them. They're actually pushing for the things that they said they would push for. And yeah, they are concerned. You know what? They're pretty cool. Yeah, you know what? Let's support that. Let's support that. Now they're putting on event and they're including people. You know, and you actually see people. You know, instead of um, like having these groups like we're catering to like outsiders or inside. And like I said, yes, I am concerned with the people of the city of Geary first. They are my priority first. But if people come from Chicago or they come from anywhere else and I, yeah, you want to speak, you want to buy art. I'm not going to say that you can't buy this art because you're not from Geary or I'm not going to say I'm not going to put your art on the wall because you're not from Geary. I'm not that type of person. But Gary artists get first priority here, absolutely. And they should, because this place didn't exist until it did. And, and I think like in that, you know, people think that um, like in setting these priorities that we exclude people, but we don't. And that's not what we should do. And I think that's where, it, you know, like that balance comes in and seeking that balance. Yo, have priority. Set your priority. Like I said, people of Gary, they're my absolute first priority. But we've got artists in here from Chicago. Uh, one artist lives in Nashville currently, and her work was part of this show. So it's very open, very inclusive. You know, it's like, and we have to actually um, broaden our scope of perception. You know, actually widen that perspective, and not just see what's here, but actually see this larger picture uh, of, of what the world can be um, when we actually are looking with open eyes like and a full view of the world instead of like this closed tiny view we'll miss so much you know I wonder if that is a side effect of gentrification where people feel like other people are coming in and creating something exclusively for themselves and I I uh, a lot of people in Gary may not even realize we're in the process of gentrification. This is, the city is in a, a state of gentrification. We might be in the beginning stage, we might be in the middle, but it is in a stage of gentrification. And for people coming in from the outside, it's important to respect the culture here that is that already exists in, in Gary. But to also convey the fact that we're not coming in to create anything exclusively for, well, at least I'm not, I'm not coming in to Gary to create something exclusively for me. Like people come into our garden space. Like I had the Nipsco man. Hey, I came over here the other day. You have all these, he saw all these jugs in the backyard. He was like, and I called my wife. I was like, I want to learn how to grow all this exotic stuff. So I, I gave him a lesson on this is how I start my seeds. But I think we have to say, we have to open our arms some way and say, okay, we're not here to create something exclusive. Mm -hmm. I just came here to live my life. You know, I homeschool, we homeschool. We might be a little, we might look weird or we might be a little quirky or something because we homeschool or we grow our own food or I cook everything from scratch or, you know, but that doesn't make me too much different than the people who are here, you know? I mean, that's actually cool as hell when you think about it. I think it is. Very and if people want to learn how to do all that stuff, I'm open to, I make June tea. I mean, I, I do all this stuff and if people want to learn how to do it, I don't have a problem with teaching, but I think it may be look, it may look so different. Mm -hmm. Maybe it looks so different. And maybe it even looks so different because somebody said this too. They were like, you live like a, a white woman with a cat. Like, you, you look like an old white woman with a cat. I don't even know what that means. But it's like, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. But maybe it's like, maybe they're not used to seeing somebody who looks like me 
<laughs> doing this stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the issue is, and maybe I'm rambling at this point. Well, I mean, honestly, like I, I think it, it. Sometimes it takes somebody that doesn't look how you would expect to say something in a different way to actually get the point across, right? People think like farmers are old white guys in coveralls with a straw hat, you know, uh, you know, and a heavy accent when that's Mm -hmm. not necessarily the case. There are some guys that actually fit that description to the T, but not all, right? Um, And it's really cool, I think, when um, people are able to see that you can do things completely differently, looking completely different from what you had expected, and they're saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. The people that look this way, the people that, yeah, this this is like your prototype, like, they're saying the same thing. They just look different. They just look different. And for some people, that's what it will actually take for them to get it. And that's my opinion. Um, I know for me, I'm like, I'm really driven when someone says it can only be done this way. Right. Like that, that actually drives me to find another way, like to do it. And then my thought process is not only am, am I going to do it, I'm also going to show you that I can get the same, if not better results by going a different way. So, so for some people, like, that's an immense drive. Like, that's an immense motivation. It's scary for people know? on the outside sometimes, though, to see you doing something different. And you know what? But the thing is, you shouldn't be scared. Mm-mm. You should actually look in and see, like, well, you know what? What is this person doing? You know, all too often, you know, we just, like, read headlines, but we don't read the rest of the story, mm-hmm. right? So we miss, like, all these little details. And just in the headline, we have whatever it reads read further into the stories oh man this is what they're doing okay that's actually pretty cool you know um so like i said i I think that a lot of times that's what it'll take it'll take somebody looking different somebody talking different somebody going about it in a different way um and especially when those things that that person is doing that individual or that group um that collective like if what they're doing is for good like it really helps people to like really helps them to get it. Say, hey, you know what? This is being done for the good of people. You know, for the betterment, for the enhancement of the quality of life for people. Yeah. We're showing you that this is not the only way to do it. What I am saying is how we're doing it actually conserves water, right? And we're actually making the most of the resources that we have in growing and help to build like these ecosystems, these different spaces, helping to build them up. It's just a different way than what you were used to. Right. It's a different way from how you were taught, but that doesn't mean that information and knowledge stops with what it is that you know. And excuse me, and, uh, and the only way that you know how to do things is not the only way to do things. Right. And then I'm gardening in a way that respects the environment of mm-hmm. Gary. Like I'm really big on terroir. So it's like, just when you're growing grapes, like just say you're making champagne or whatever, you have to be really big on that environment because a grape or a produce grown in Gary is gonna taste totally, it should be a different taste than a grape or produce grown in Chicago because I'm using organic material from Gary and Gary has its own special sacredness in its soil. And so I don't even know where I'm going with that. It's like sometimes I have conversations in here, and but I don't cool even for, know where I'm going. But it with was cool for people to just hear it like that—that <laughs> that there is like a sacredness in the soil, right? I mean, so and even if you go on a play of words, you just talk about like what's here, like in the earth, found in this specific like this, location. This place was created by glaciers, like. Do you even understand the magnitude of the soil that has been created by glaciers? Gary was created by glaciers? Like that's a huge thing for somebody who wants to nerd out on soil or nerd out on gardening. But the minerals that's in this soil is on a different, they can be, especially if we cultivate those minerals, on a whole different level than the other than another area in, in around here. So when you're gardening, and when you're gardening in a way that we garden, which is regenerative agriculture and respecting that land and respecting the, the things that are on that land and that are in that soil, 
you can just bring out a whole different element of taste. And that's why I've said this in other in interviews that I've had that Gary could be like the foodie capital of the United States because of the minerals in the soil. If we garden in a way or if we farm in a way that respects the soil in Gary and not just because most gardeners, most farmers bring in soil from other places or they they trans it's just like people coming across state lines and, mm -hmm. and you're not respecting the soil that's already here but if we learn how to garden and farm in ways that respect the soil that's already here we can take agriculture in this city can be on a whole different level like colorado is doing phenomenal things but Colorado does not have what Gary has when it comes to agriculture. And we can just take this to a whole nother level. Like this city does not have to be impoverished. We don't have to have that, that, that stereotype of being poor, or being blighted. It doesn't, none of that has to exist. None of it has to exist. But, and it, it doesn't even, if we get to the soil, if we get to agriculture and people are creating businesses on their own, at their own homes because many of the areas in Gary are zoned for agriculture. So you can literally have your own business, your own farm based at your home. And you don't have to just produce food. You can be, do, be producing beauty products. You can be producing clothes and dyes and all of this stuff can come out. Just utilizing the soil that's here or utilizing and respecting and regenerating the soil that's here. So, and also to your point, just to follow up, like as we wrap up, um, if you actually um, respect the people uh, who are the soil of the city of Gary, um, you see that we can actually take this place uh, to another level. Uh, we can uh, effect change in amazing ways, um, not just in agriculture, um, not just in art, not just in politics, not just in education, um, but in all of those. Um, and I think that will be um, something to uh, keep your eye on uh, as citizens um, of the city of Gary um, to actually be responsible and to hold others responsible for the way uh, in which we view this city, um, in which we view the people, uh, in which we view the, those people who are in positions to effect change, um, to actually um, pick a side and not walk in the middle or not hang on the fence, but to actually say, you know what, I'm going to be an agent of change for the good. And in so doing, um, really address the problems that are found in this city and find a way to make this place better, um, not just for ourselves, um, not just for our children, but for future uh, generations uh, that will be coming and growing up through the soil of Gary. Um, it's been a wonderful time talking with you today, Thank Aja. you, likewise. Um, we we'll always like to thank uh, Supreme One behind the lens, my brother Prem, always. Uh, they said this weekend on Saturday uh, at seven o'clock, we're gonna be having uh, Souls of Black Folks, uh, Glimpse Into Time, it's gonna be an exhibition. Uh, new one is going up. It's Laurent MC and OG Bink. It's gonna be a good time. You should definitely come through. Don't want to keep on telling you guys that you should be here. You're just going to miss it. You're just going to catch the recap. You're just going to like the status. And that's cool. But you come in here, see it for yourself, and get some of this vibe, get this, some of this good feeling on your skin. All right? This is Cross Colors. This is JP. I'm out of here. Man, I love y'all.